Thank you for your attention today. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of the ongoing activities in our lab with respect to analyzing particles, droplets, and interfaces with bourbon whiskey. And that's sort of a theme that we have in my lab with respect to using microscopes and other visualization techniques to look at particle fluid interactions. We have several ongoing projects that are supported by NASA, industry, and NSF within this realm. But today I'm going to talk to you about bourbon whiskey. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is whiskey haze. Now, when you have bourbon and you dilute it, you typically dilute it down from a barrel proof um, so you can sell more product. And you don't want to go below 86 proof. At least that's a general marker. Most of them are 90, 91, 92 proof. Um, but when you do dilute it, it can get hazy. Now, what happens is that you're diluting the amount of ethanol. Ethanol would dissolve a lot of these constituents that are within whiskey. So it can create a hazy product. And even if it's not hazy initially, right then and there, either during the transportation process or during the shelf life, it could get hazy after some period of time. So what happens is that the bourbon industry typically goes through a filtration process. And it's one of two techniques. One of them is either activated charcoal or a chill filtration. And both of these help remove some of these um, agglomerates from the system. Now, there is such a thing as filtering it too much. It can impact flavor and color. And currently, there's no universal technique between the distilleries that, uh, that assess chill haze or whiskey haze. There's even some that can take weeks and they go through a refrigeration or freezing process to assess this. Um, some also look at particular extracts. So again, there's no universal method. And here's a picture showing you what could happen to a product in terms of its color and clarity when it goes through this. So a technique that we're developing in my lab is using an optical technique. It's not quite turbidity. Turbidity, turbidity looks at the cloudiness. This is a step further in that we're looking at the scattering. So if you shine a laser at the particles and you, and you have a detector that looks at, we'll say, the sparkling of the particles and they look at intensity as well, you can get an idea of the size of the particles. Not just the size, but we'll say the dispersity. So are some small, are some large? This is what's called the polydispersity index. And it's been well known and studied for a while that the more polydispersed, so the amount of large and small particles, the more diversity there is there, the more unstable the solution is. And in this case, the tendency for it to, uh, for whiskey at least, for it to haze. So we got some samples um, from a distillery and we looked at um, what it was before their charcoal filtration process and then after. And usually with the charcoal filtration, they go through stages because they don't want to do it too much. They do a little bit and then assess it and do a little bit and assess it again. But we are able to analyze and demonstrate and show that their sample was indeed stable, which is what they were looking at, but also that we were able to do this measure within minutes as opposed to some other techniques where they let it settle or go through this freezing process that can take days. So now I'm going to move on to another topic. So now you know that there are particles within bourbon whiskey. What we did next is we took a droplet of bourbon whiskey and we evaporated it. So this is a time lapse of that um, on this slide. And then as it evaporated, we noticed, we noticed these uh, strands, these finger-like patterns on the droplet after the evaporation. So what's happening here is that as the droplet is evaporating, the ethanol evaporates first. So the ethanol evaporates before the water. And when that happens, all the constituents, all those chemicals that the ethanol would otherwise dissolve and keep homogeneous, now they start to quasi-solidify. In this case, they form a skin on the surface of a droplet. Now, the droplet is still evaporating, so the surface area is still decreasing, meaning the skin, this chemical skin on the surface, starts to buckle. And the result is this pattern that you see here. And then we zoom in and zoom in more. And we notice it's almost like a, a tissue paper that's been crumpled when we look at the surface. But of course, we're at the nano scale. And what these are, these are chemical compositions that reflect what is within the whiskey itself. And when we tested all these different American whiskeys, we tested over 80 of them, they all produced their own unique pattern when they were evaporated. Um, so what, the first thing we did is we looked at this, we made a digital library of all the ones that we had, and we were able to throw at it, say, an unknown uh, droplet 
And from that, over 90% of the time, we could detect which bourbon it was from our library. Also, if you added different chemicals to it, so maybe more vanillin, more acetic acid, more lignin, whatever it may be, all these different chemicals also influence that web, that architecture there. So we're currently looking into whether we can use this as an inexpensive way of doing a chemical analysis of whiskey. So with that, I thank you for your attention. I'm going to leave up here uh, some publications that we've had with what we've just discussed here. And feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email here as well as some websites that we have. Thank you.